that I have a very special guest that's going to be joining me today. He's currently ranked number six in the IBF, the number 13 in WBA. He's one of the top guys in the light heavyweight division. He's 22 and one overall in his career. He has 16 career KOs. That's Malik Zanad. Malik, appreciate you taking time to come on today, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me, man. How are you? Absolutely, man. I'm great. Well, we got a lot to get into today. I want people to get to know your story a little bit, talk about your life and everything. And the very first thing I do want to get into those because one of the people that took place in the big fight this past weekend is someone that you recently fought. Another guy, Archer Better Beev, is a guy I know you have a relationship with to a certain extent. And I know that's obviously one of the biggest things in boxing we've had in basically this entire century. And so you being in this weight class, I just want to kind of pick your brain a little bit on that. I'm sure you watched the fight. Take us through that just a little bit. Watching two guys that you have known, you've had different run-ins with throughout your career, and see those two guys compete at the highest stage. What was it like this past week in watching that? I like the fight. The fight was close, and mm -hmm. uh, before it was like a like a punching in the beginning, you know, yeah. like first, then got he got big pressure from him. You know what I'm saying? So he mm -hmm. got big pressure. He threw more punch, uh, to re more punch throw. So I feel like uh, he he got the win. You know. So when you look at those fights and, and you see a guy like you said, you obviously went against Bill just a couple months ago, which we're going to talk about in a few moments now. Another guy in order better be it, but just seeing two of the guys that are recognized as two of the top pound pound guys of this entire generation, seeing these big fights get made now, a part of Riyadh season, which you've also been a part of now, how big is do you think that is for the, for the sport of boxing? That's amazing, man. That's not happened for like 25 years ago, you yep. know? It's like early history you know, coming back in Saudi, so that's amazing. And there's more fight, there's more exciting things happening there. So that's what that's what that's what that's what we love, you know. And we got more opportunity there. Before I don't have, I don't get opportunities like that, you know. Now yeah. everyone can to fight there. Everyone get big opportunities, big stage. So that's really amazing from Saudi, you know. what I'm saying. Yeah. Well, I want to get into that about yourself because as I just alluded to, just a couple months ago, you had. Probably the biggest five of your entire career. When you talk about on the biggest stage of your career, the biggest opponent of your career. And I want to discuss that. So the first part of that I want to ask you though is we look at Riyadh's season now, and it's become bigger and bigger now. We're just about one year ago from the Francis Ngannou Tyson Fury fight, which really was the first massive large scale event that they produced now. You were a part of that. What would you say would be the biggest differences between that car, just the overall hype up for the week, the week of the fight, the performance, the actual fight itself? What makes your Riyadh season different than other events that you've been a part of? I mean, they they make everything like a high level, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So everything different, everything like all like uh, they looking after them shows, they looking after them quality. That's that's the important, you know. And we never see this before. So yeah. if you want to fight there, if you want uh, want to have opportunity there, and they give this opportunity for everybody, you know, and we give them credit for this, you know, and they get on there fighting again, big fight for me. Well, that's why I wanted to ask you because we know that you just were had a big time show, which I want to break down in a few moments. But at the end of that fight, His Excellency came out and said, you know, he'd love to have you back. And then I saw in your store just a few days ago after the fight when you said that your next fight will be in Riyadh season. And so I have to ask you then, so what kind of is the plans in store for yourself then? What are you looking at? Is there a certain date that we can expect from you? Or what's kind of in the works for yourself for your next possible fight? So my last fight with Bivol, it was like a short note of three weeks for me. Yeah. So not ready. I take this fight. You know why? Because, you know, I came where I came from. There's yeah, when I came from a professional, first professional fighter, hard to get this kind of opportunities, you know. Yep. So when, when they want me to fight, they take it straight away because I'm a, another day I'm a fighter, and I already fought before that, like a couple of weeks before yeah. I fought fight in Australia and stuff. So I say, yeah, come, this opportunity good for me. And then now they will see Malik Zinat going to in the top with with like now I'm training with Fredo, you know, mm -hmm. the legend. So. So I'm here in America. So they will see something special for me coming up now in sports boxing. So as far as what the public at least knows, we know that they have the next Riyadh season card should be the December 21st one, the rematch, Fury Usyk. I think that card's already set for us, already set and planned out. So I know the next one's been rumored. It's February 22nd. Is that possibly the one we could look at you? Is that the one we could see you possibly being on? I believe so. I, I'm going to have like a big fight coming up. They, 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 they talk with my manager and stuff. So maybe mm -hmm. in February fight in Saudi so it's gonna be huge you're gonna see something special in the ring you know with big team around me and uh, big relaxing and ready for to fight not like a short note for me I'm ready for training from now keeping myself in good position you know I'm making history you know what I'm saying and uh, thank you for your uh, season for about this Mali Turkel Sheikh for looking after me and stuff so I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna make them uh, proud of me for the next fight 
Well, there's a lot of guys in the light heavyweight division right now. Obviously, we know the two top guys that just fought, but we looked down a list of guys that are in that contending group alongside yourself now. Lennon Arthur is obviously a name. Callum Smith is a name. Abba Ramirez, Joshua Buatzi, Anthony Yardy, et cetera, et cetera. Do you happen to have any idea who you might be fighting in February, your next fight, or is that something that you're still negotiating? Or where do you stand in terms of who your next opponent might be? Uh, I'm not sure exactly, but I believe Buatzi or Danny Aziz, you know, one of them, I believe. Anyone, I'm, I'm, I'll be ready for anyone. I fight the best in three weeks. I fight when <laughs> number one, the best one. So I don't care me. I'm going to fight anyone when when in my prime, you know, when I'm, when I'm ready, like like yeah. I'm working hard, folks and stuff. There isn't, sort of, there isn't something like make me rush to travel to make training come. No, I'm here to, to, for ready. So I fight anybody and they're going to see something special in the ring with like a big team, Fredo in my back, my team, everything. So they're going to see magazine that in the top of, of light every way. They will see that. That's awesome, man. So I do want to ask you about this part because you kind of just briefly brushed over that part. But this was a big deal because let's go back to May time. You have a fight that was obviously not an easy fight overall. I know you guys took a lot of damage in that first fight out in, in May. And then, like you said, five weeks later, you're back in the ring against the best fighter or one of the best fighters in the entire world. That's not a transition that a lot of people would do, especially when you're in your position where you're working your way already up. You already were a guy that had a lot of notoriety coming behind your name. You were properly working yourself up. That's a big jump and a very short notice for yourself to take that. I'm not sure how many fighters in the world would take that fight. You said, like you said, I want to go do it. But take us through the mindset a little bit be, be, behind that because that's not a common thing we see a lot of the time. What was it about that fight that when you got the opportunity to fight Bivol, that you said, you know what, this might not make the most sense, I might not be the most prepared, but you know what, I'm going to go pursue this fight. Yes, I mean, I, I, I take the fight to fight, you know. Many fighters, they fight him, they run away, they never even fight. I come to fight, you know what I'm saying? I know, like, a different situation, he had been ready for, like, eight months training and stuff, but for me, like, three weeks, but anyway... Why, why, for why you take the fight? Because it's a, it's a great opportunity. Last year I was looking for some fight like that. Never, one, no one give me fight. One year I don't fight. You know what I'm saying? Till, till it comes like a Australian fight, I take it and I go. There, I win the fight, come back. So one year no one offer me. Don't I'm training, I'm ready. No one offer me, so I got depressed. So I fight anybody because hard. Where I came from, um, my country had no boxing, so no, no hard to get kind of opportunities. So that's why I take anything. You know what I'm saying? These three weeks. But I know this fight is going to take me to the next level anyway, you know? Yep. There's a lot of benefit from this. I fight the best one, one bound, you know what I'm saying? Like something good to make me uh, experience big and stuff like that. So when I come to fight, everyone say that how, how, how I fought with him, you know what I'm saying? So my body is not going to take anymore because I was tired second round, but it doesn't matter. I come to fight. I can't, I can't fight with him like running away, close, running away, running away. Mm -hmm. running away him, and I finish with 12, 12. 12, 12, 12 round, you know what I'm saying? But the referee stopped the fight, but he can see that I'm tired, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I keep fighting till I die, no problem. I can, I can, he can make me sleep, it doesn't matter. But I never quit, I want to keep going. The referee stopped mm -hmm. the fight. But anyway, good opportunity for me. And they're going to see Marek Zinna now climb up with my prime, you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. uh, ready, ready. I'm re relaxing, my mind's relaxing, everything is happy. I'm happy, all of people happy around me. So that's it. I'm game going now, you know what I'm saying? 30 years old. You know, next month I will be 31 years old. So, mm -hmm. I'll be, you know what I'm saying? You have a couple of years. You're going to see Malik Zinna then stop and fly the heavyweight. Well, I want to ask you about that mindset a little bit more because that's a unique mindset as you alluded to there because everybody always says you want the big fight. Of course, everybody wants to fight the top guys. You want a chance to prove yourself. But the real question is, do you want that no matter what the circumstances are? Because a lot of people would say, like you said, okay, I want it to be a perfect situation. I get my eight-month training camp and then I'll do the big fight. But like you said, you said, yeah, I want this big fight. No matter what the outside circumstances are, I'm going to make sure I pursue that because that's what I've always wanted for. What gave you that mindset where you said, truly, no matter what it is, I want this goal. I'm going to go make it happen as opposed to just saying, you know what, everything has to be perfect for it to happen for myself. Yes, because like uh, before that, always have a hard time, always like uh, like uh, looking for opportunities, look for a hard time to pay a lot of things, expenses and stuff. But now everything I had, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I got big money, I got stuff, so it doesn't matter. Now, from now, I can't show the world what Malik Zinat is going to do, you know, I have everything. I don't need nothing now, you know what I'm saying? So now only focus about my training, you know, people around me, that's it. That's nothing else. So now I'm going to show the people what I'm going to do in boxing. That's why I take this opportunity because because it's hard. Like I said, it's hard to to take opportunity like that. Mm -hmm. They offer you something like that, you know what I'm saying? Even short notes me, I take the fight. I'm ready, you know what I'm saying? I say I take the fight. And now we'll see what's going to happen in like a couple couple months 
All right, so let's just say hypothetically, if you would have had an opportunity where that was a situation you had a two, three, four month training camp to prepare for, how much different do you think that fight would have went against Dimitri Bevel? It's gonna be good, man. It's gonna be like a, a huge. If like I get my time and get my training, you know what I'm saying? I'll mm -hmm. be, I'll be monster in the ring. But uh, you know that's that's happening. This is a reading, you know what I'm saying? Like three yeah. weeks. Better. But anyway, maybe we'll fight him again. And he's and he's in my mind anyway. You know, this mm -hmm. for me is not lost because it's like I lost with the, the, like the best. But he's in my mind. Maybe the fight is gonna happen again. You know, so I'm working hard about these things. You know, how many fighters before they lost? Like and they get back and they get back world champions again. There's many, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that's in my mind now. If I lost this one, everyone know why I lost. Everyone know I'm not prepared for this. But when they see me world champion, then they would like saying like he did it. That's what I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna prove to people, you know. And so what I want to ask you then is, when you look at that fight, obviously you guys went six rounds. You had a great producer. Obviously the beginning parts, especially, you put on a lot of pressure on Dimitri Bill right out of the gate. But when you look back now, you've rewatched the fight, you've done film or whatnot. What would you say you've learned from that fight now, as, as you prepare for your upcoming fights? What was something you said you'd say you took away from that fight that you've now incorporated and helped grow yourself in as you prepare for your next fight? The fun things and I, I I learned from this fight to put my hands up. That's mm -hmm. the fact. <laughs> but next level now. So now everything, like every my sparring, my training, everything, my hands up now. So now mm -hmm. different situation, you know, because now next level. So I need to put my hands up to save to save my, you know, like you know what I'm saying. So this is the first things I learned from this fight. I need to put my hands up, and that's what we work for now. And then I'm gonna prove my com uh, combinations. You know, uh, many things sure. we work more. But the best things, my hands is gonna be up for all my fights now. From now, <laughs> then. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Absolutely. Like more danger, more power, like this. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's because open for him. That's why he cuts me because I'm open. You know what I'm saying? I'm open. Yeah. For him. He's easy target for me. Mm -hmm. But for hands up. You know what I'm saying? It's a bit hard, but. I'm gonna try it now to work on these things. I'm really working on these things. You know what I'm saying? Now it's my, all my sparring now is like all my hands up, man. And I feel <laughs> it on a boom, boom. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be, they're gonna see something special from my exit net. There was a really special thing about the fight, and this was afterwards, especially. And, I, and I'm pretty sure you've already seen it though, but you were part of the very first cinematic style fight film between you and Bivol, where that fight was produced in a very high level film. It was almost was as if you were watching a movie, essentially. I'm sure you already were able to watch through that part, at least see some of it. What was your thoughts on that? Just seeing how special that creation was, where you have pretty much a movie made out of your own fight. Oh, uh, and when I saw this fight, like I said, shit, if I'm ready, man. Shit, if I like, I have three months of training. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I've, you know, I'm prime, my prime. I don't have fight before that. My the fight before that, even my my my, you know, my my sparring for the Bevel fight only three times, three to four times spar only. Mm -hmm. Because my trainer told me how to stop sparring because I have injury here. So he told me stop sparring. I can't spar. And I signed the contract. So you know what I'm saying? So it's a bit hard for me. So yeah. the fight say shit. If, like even my father told me, if you are training for this fight three to four, five months, you will be crazy in the ring. I will be ready for him. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's all about like I'm not ready for this fight. That's all. When I see this fight, all about like I don't train for long for this fight. But anyway, I have no time no time to do it. I have no, you know what I'm saying, no excuses. They will yeah. see me coming up now. You know, working hard for this, what I'm going to do. As I say it already, I say it. I will be world champion and I'm working for this right now. And let's see time what's going to give to me, you know, inshallah. Absolutely, man. Well, I want to go through your career. I literally said in the very beginning that you have a unique story. And I want people to get to know you a little bit better and how you become the fighter that you are today. So let's bring it all the way back then. You're born out there in Libya. And that was obviously a situation where when you're growing up there, Boxing is not allowed. That's not allowed out there. And so there's not anyone that's never been a professional boxer come out of Libya before. You're the very first one ever. And so I got to ask you about this then. How did you guys make that happen? Growing up out there in a, in a country where you can't box and yet you become a guy that's now a highly ranked light heavyweight champion. Uh, what was it like just growing up out there? And how did you end up getting the sport of boxing brought into your life? I mean, uh, the who, who teach me boxing is my father because my father, he was a boxer before, you know, I mean, just. Mm -hmm teach me boxing when I was young, so the boxing grow with me, you know what I'm saying? And I don't I don't know, do nothing in life, only fight. Fight street, fight, that's what I'm doing, nothing else. And I'm not good, nothing. Only in, in sport, of boxing. Mm -hmm. So as soon as the boxing come back to Libya, when, when the, president, the president die, because he stopped the boxing in Libya. Yeah. When he finished, died, the boxing is back. But because the, the boxing is not, not, not good in my country, Libya, so I need to travel to Europe. I start in Malta. You know, travel Malta and start my career from there. It was hard time for me, to, you know, like a different situation, like 
Like I fought different, different, different country in the world. I fought in Belgium, in UK. I fight everywhere. You know, I prove myself. You know, I have no promoter. I have nothing. I prove myself. I manage myself. You know, what I'm saying I got, I got, I got manager before, and I, I, my contract finished with him, Daniel Alon, and then I finished myself. After that, I finished everything by myself. You know, I have no promotion, I have nothing, so I have to push myself hard time. Push, I prove myself. I have no idea here, and I have no Frank, I have nobody. I prove myself. Mm-hmm. I work hard for this time. Not easy, like you know, not like I have a promoter to build me up and and make me fight. So no, no, I did myself everything. I did myself. I put, put my ring by myself, and then look, you know what I'm saying. I did. The, I was with a hard time, you know, like a really hard time. I I, I face, but that doesn't matter. That's what gave me the strength to be where I am now. You know. Yeah. So now I have my team. Now I have my team management. No man, I have I have people around me work for my things out, my training and stuff. But before I was working hard because no one believing you. You came from country. There isn't boxing, so this guy is not gonna come to the top. So I have to myself and work hard for this moment. You know, that's what I did. I work hard. You know, I got sponsors. HP Group. He supported me my from the beginning of my career. He starts supporting me. Invest money on me to get my titles. Get IPO title. WBC Mediterranean. I got mm-hmm. the yeah, so he, he invested a lot of money for me to build myself and to, to put my ring up and fight anyone. You yeah. know, that's it. It's happened. You know, I make it. And now I'm ready to go. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm ready to go. I have experience. I have a lot of pressure before. I used I used to this. So no one can do any pressure to me. I can say it now. No one can do pressure for me because I used for all the pressures in my life. I used before. I, I have a pressure when I was young before boxing and I have pressure now. When like in my career, so I'm I'm using to this, you know what I'm saying. So they're gonna see special Malik Zinad back coming up. So yeah. Now correct me if I'm wrong or not, because when I was researching your your childhood and how you kind of got into boxing, what I read online was that you were pretty much having to train. The only way you could train, obviously, we talked about was illegal out there. But you had to practice in your basement with your father. Yeah. Was that the true story? Is that how you got into boxing, or how were you able to even to practice out there when the, when it was an illegal sport to produce? To produce? Yes allowed to to train boxing because it's banned you know the boxing is banned so mm-hmm. if you if you if they hear that you do boxing you go to prison you know so i did it with my father alone you know said like hiding you know hiding you know what I'm saying? that's yeah. well, that's good story you know so <laughs> that's what i learned from you know yeah and so what age was that around that you started produce or started boxing then was that like really early on five years old six years old whatever it was or when did you really start producing playing yeah. boxing yeah, from six years, my father started teaching me up when I was young. I remember he's like, punch me in the stomach, punch me in the stomach. I was punching my father in the stomach. Boom, boom. He <laughs> teaching me like that from the, oh, I still remember it till now. And then we make sparring like, like he has two gloves, me took anyone in the street, bigger than me, say, like, put him gloves, come hit my son. And start, <laughs> that. I swear like that, boom, boom, my, my neighbor, who my brother. So they are bigger than me. They always like, punch, punch with me, punch with me. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like this, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. get hit. He put it on my, in my, my like blood, you know, my soul, you know. What I'm saying, that's what he, that's what my father did, because he know that I, I'm not good for nothing, man. Even no good for school, no good for nothing. So he said, this guy, he nothing, only sport, because I was like a kickboxing, like a same kickboxing. We do some, kick, this is allowed to Libya. So I was doing things before boxing is back, you know. Before mm-hmm. so African champion, gold medal, I was stuff like that, you know. And like a kickboxing sport, and then as soon as boxing's back, boom, back to boxing, and they left to you. Now I've been ten years professional fighter, you know, away from. Yeah. All right. So if I would have told the ten-year-old yourself that you're one day going to be in a position where you're fighting on one of the biggest stages in the world, fighting guy like Dimitri Bivol, like you're going to be a guy that ranks inside the top ten as a as a contender, would you have always imagined that? Is that what you always expected, or would you think if I would have told a ten-year ten-year-old self of you of that, would you think you'd be a little shocked or surprised there? To be honest, before when I was young, always I'm in I'm in toilet, like uh like doing like you know when you do something with yourself in the front of the mirror in the toilet talking with yourself. I swear, like imagine like oh champion Malik Zinad, like this Malik. I swear, like with the birds, this is like imagine my mind when I was young. I remember till now, you know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. oh, you know he win. This is like come to me like this, and then bum 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 bum. You know, lives like this man just keep working or whatever. And God opened the way for us. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. My, you know, like happy, pray for me, everything. That's it. That's all. I, that's all what I want. You know. And, and so was- you also talked about going to Malta. Then was that something that you moved out there by yourself? Did you and your father move out, or what was that transition like when you had to move out to Malta? Because I was in Libya. I was like a 
bad boy in the street and stuff. My father gave up, you know, say like always fights, always things. He say, listen, go out. It's the best things my father did for me. He said, go out to Europe. You know, he make me visa. You know, he said, you have to leave go to Europe. You know, that's it. That, that's the best things that my father did. If you don't do that, maybe I stay in Libya, like fighting, maybe in prison, maybe hit someone, someone hit me. That's it. That's my life is going to be. So as soon as I travel, my life changed like this. Boom. So I married. I married, like, I have a great wife, and she make me, like, she helped me so much to get my mentally straight to my, like, change my life, change my life. Before, when you look at me mad, I say, why you look at me? I want to make a fight with you. Like, this before my mentally it was. But now, different. You know, now I have a daughter, my wife look after me. You know, I have a family. I know, like, when I was young before, I was, like, a bad boy and stuff. This is not wrong. So the best boxing, like, saying, like, say it before, it saved my life, to be honest. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so then you start going through this journey then, and like you said, you start working your way up, having to fight all around the world. But the big thing about this is that you become the very first international Libyan professional boxer. There's never been one before. You're the very first ever. What does that statement mean to you? Oh, that's crazy, man. The pressure all come on me, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Big pressure on me. So it's, this is really good now. So I always say it before. The fighters come after me, they will see everything more easy for them. You know, they will learn from me. They learn, they really learn from me. They do what I did before. I did a lot of things, you know what I'm saying? A lot of things in Libya. The first, like, they're watching my fight live in Libya. Like, like when I sell them the fight to Libya, to watch me live. So one million sometimes is watching, like, a views, like, high views, everyone watching me. Only me, like, is making fights. So now boxing is back, you know, in Libya, you know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. I built up the, the fans from boxing again, boom. You know, so now the the fights come after me. They be like, they get it easy way. You know, the easy way because they they, they learn from me. You know what I'm saying? But me, I, I learn from nobody because I got nobody to learn from. You know, they do everything myself. It was really hard and pressure on me. You know what I'm saying? And this is good anyway. I'm happy with that. I have my brother too. He's young. He's a he's a he's a fighter. He's a five you know professional fighter. He's so he's good. So he got my experience. He working hard now. He's here with me in America, you know. So that's it. That's all about like boom, boom, boom. So the, but the hard time, the pressure come on me. A lot of pressure, man. A lot, a lot of pressure. Some days like uh, you know, I need to cry. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of things, no opportunity, no spy, no fights. Everyone close the door on you. No one want to promote me. I was like shit. But I would prove myself. Like this in my mind, I would prove myself. You know what I'm saying? And I did it. And now. I'm going to be world champion. I write it in my mind. I write it in my book. I want to be world champion. That's my goal now. I'm going to work hard for this point. Now I have everything. Everything I have. I'm happy. I'm relaxed. Family good. My people good. My team is good. Happy. My sponsor. Everything. Everything I have now. Only th one thing I don't have is the world title. That's what's in my mind now. You know? And I will prove it. If, the, if you go see my interviews before, I say that. I will be in top level. And I'm in top 10, top level anyway. So mm -hmm. that's about here so here is like a world title and i'm working for this all right so let's say you get that world title one day what would that mean to you knowing that not only are you now the first ever professional fighter from libya but you're then going to become the very first world title champion from libya as well what would that mean to you to have that not only for yourself but for your entire country yeah it's gonna be a huge man it's gonna be a lot of it for me for my family they're gonna be proud of me my people you know what i'm saying so it's gonna be huge I'm going to do it, man. I'm going to do it one day. You know, it's going to be a big, 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 huge for me, this one. I will be proud of myself. You know, I said, I did it. I will tell myself I did that. You know what I'm saying? So it's going to be huge. I can't, I can't say how it's going to be because it's big, big, big means, you know, for it. Yeah. So I'm working hard for that. When you just talk about representing, because I think a lot of people look at it and, you know, especially when you're in a country that has so many professional fighters, you know, you talk about something like the USA, you talk about the UK or something, you know, there's so many people and you still represent your country, you still have a lot of pride in that aspect. But there's so many people that's also sharing in that same movement for yourself. Well, when you talk about someone like yourself now, you are the face of your whole country. You know, there's not a lot of people out there. You are the guy that represents the entire nation. People, the entire country supports you. It's not like the debate between two or three different guys that they all like. You're the guy they're going to support and represent. To have an entire nation behind you and, and you kind of looking up to you in a sense, what does that also mean to you? And is that any pressure you'd say you put on yourself because of that? Yes, a lot of pressure, you know, a lot of pressure. I have a lot of haters too, you know. So pressure both sides. They happy for me. There's a lot of people happy for me. What I did, did in box sports boxing, and big pressure, you know, because I have haters too, you know, like a big haters. I have in my country, you know. What I'm saying, <laughs> yeah, because I'm, I'm like, uh, I have. A, there's two teams in football. I have, I support one of them. Other team are don't like me at all. You know, what I'm saying they don't like me. <laughs> 
they just train up, they always make laugh at me, they make posters and stuff. And when I lost the fight with Bivol, they was so hobby, you know what I'm saying? They post things about me, yeah, man. So that's 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 okay, you know. That I know that. This is that's how to be famous, you know. And I'm 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 famous in my country, so mm -hmm. so yeah, so this is like normal. But it's big pressure on me, man, a lot of pressure, man. You know what I'm saying? Lots of pressure. But especially next fight, it's gonna be big pressure for me too, you know? Mm -hmm. One waiting for me was gonna do, you know? And I'm gonna win the fight. 100% because I'm working for that time. I'm gonna make the haters wish me to see me lose again, if God willing. Yeah. Well, let's go back into that now because I do want to ask about this next chapter. Because one other part about that is I know we already talked about potential people you're gonna fight against, when that next fight could be. But I know you also have a new coach. You're out here in America, you're in LA right now training with the legendary Freddie Roach. Walk us through this whole experience. What what gave you that opportunity? How did Coach Roach get into your life? And just take us through this whole transaction now of you now being in America, fighting and training for your next fight. Uh, it's amazing, man. My team, uh, my management team, he contacted me with this uh, gym. And then when I came here, I have uh, AD uh, and Fredo, both both trainers are training me right now. Amazing, amazing, amazing experience experience for me. Amazing sparring. Uh, Fredo, he gave me a lot of good things. I can't see myself proving a lot, a lot, proving a lot from many things, my combinations, my hands up. This is important. You know, he worked for my feet works, how to work, how to control the fight and so that's really amazing. A lot of experience from him and uh, that's gonna be crazy and it's gonna be like a big benefit for me to reach to reach my goal. It's gonna be a world champion, you know? Yeah. So what would you say the difference would be now being able to do a training camp in America with an incredible coaching staff, an incredible group of people around you now, how much different has this preparation for this upcoming fight been than opposed to your other fights you've had in your career? Oh, it's gonna be make it's gonna make me strong, uh, it's be like a good 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 like a power techniques, you know techniques like like more experience, more like a more uh, different different Malik's not different, you know it's not the same one before it's different one. Gonna, they're gonna see someone different in the ring, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of things good here I can see, you know what I'm saying? Sparring is amazing, spar with different people all the time, you know hard sparring, punching, bloods. That's that's what I like, you know. In Europe, you know what I'm saying? So that's what I like here, and it's gonna be. I'm gonna be a different person in the next fight. You know what I'm saying? Fred with me, he's giving me the he give me the power, the strength. So my the AD with me too. So my team, and it's gonna be huge. It's gonna be huge. People are gonna be like, wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. All right, so walk us through your timeline for yourself personally, because obviously you have your upcoming fight, possibly it's going to be the February 22nd one, whatever that's going to look like. But in terms of just your ultimate goal, you're talking about you want to be a world champion one day. The next fight obviously won't be for that world championship yet. But what's kind of the timeline for yourself? You have this upcoming fight. You obviously beat one of the guys you listed there. Obviously, you'll then be in position. We don't know if the rematch will happen between Better Beev and Bivol. We don't know what it's going to look like yet. But what's the timeline for yourself? Like, when do you think you possibly could have another world title fight? Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. The time will come. I know that. Like mm -hmm. the, now, for me, like in good position, they will come again for sure. I know that. You know, mm -hmm. as one uh, uh, patient and folks and keep going in my like straight line that I'm working for. You know, and the time will come. I know. I don't know exactly when, when, mm -hmm. but but will come. I know 100. percent I believe that. You know, I believe the time will come for this. So I'm gonna work, stay focused, and work for the same what I'm doing now. I'm focused. Don't look for nothing. Don't look for the politic, the, the haters, and let them see me what I'm going to do. Absolutely, man. Well, a few more things before I let you go. One of which is something I just want to pick your mind on a little bit, and that's talking about your overall fighting career so far. And so this can be, kind of put you on the spot a little bit, but when you look back at all the fights you've had so far, what would you say has been the toughest fight you've ever had? And what would you say has been your favorite fight you've had so far in your career? Uh, I mean... Stuff fights event I learned from I don't know guys what like what do you want me to say about it like so whichever one you kind of would say for the for the toughest one you say which which one would you say you probably learn from the most or which one would you say kind of put you through the most to kind of grow you as a fighter the most and then your favorite one obviously whichever one you'd say was your favorite the favorite one was in Australia that's that's the one gave me put me in the map you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying that's one that, that that that's the best offer I got the best opportunity as soon as they told they told me about this fight I take it and I got there boom. I went that guy in in his in his, in his in his promotion and stuff. So that's that's really good for me. That's a perfect one. And there's one before that too in, uh, in Belgium. It was in WBA. Uh, mm -hmm. um, the, uh, I no WBA. Yes, WBA. Yeah, WBA, WBA title. It was too. It was I invest this. I invest on myself on this, and they make me small ring. They want me to lose 15 feet rings. You know, mm -hmm. 
was the fight. The fighter wasn't defeated. I beat him up, you know what I'm saying? I beat him up. That's, I'll be happy for, like, really happy for the time because they make me, they want me to lose and I make it and I win the fight, you know? Mm. But by both eyes, I was, I was, un, I, like, crazy in the ring. So that's one good fight too. And the before fight, this is, this is what I learned from, you know? Yeah. My fight, who, what I learned from, I'm going to make me prove to be a world champion. Absolutely, man. Well, my final question I always like wrapping up each interview with is talking about your legacy. I know we just got done talking about being able to represent your nation, represent your country. But when that day does come and you decide to step away from boxing, whatever that's going to look like, whenever that is, what do you want to be remembered for, for what you accomplished both in and outside of the ring? I mean, I will, uh, I will be promoted for sure. I will, I will help some fighters because I know that what fighters need, you know, that that's what I'm doing now anyway, you know, mm-hmm. I'm some fighters and give them like equipment and stuff what they need because i know what they need because i know myself what i need when i was a fighter you know mm-hmm. first things i'm gonna do like i'm doing like i'm manage some fighters and doing some promotion you know and uh doing my businesses because I'm, I'm gonna focus only on business after finish boxing i'm gonna focus in businesses you know what i'm saying yeah. some businesses and stuff so that's all about and uh, that's it that's it that's all about and then the important the world titan i'm gonna put it in my home you know what i'm saying that's that's the important one so my mm-hmm. daughter when they see and they say, my, my father did it, did it, my father, with all the time he got. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Well, Malik, I appreciate you taking time to come on today, man. I'm so excited to see what God's got next for you, man, your next chapter, your next fight. And I appreciate you taking time to come on today again, man. Thank you, brother. Thank you for having me. And uh, keep going, buddy. I support you too for you. Absolutely, <laughs> man. You're always welcome on. Anytime you want to come on, just let me know. You're always welcome on, man. Thank you. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. Absolutely, man. God bless. And God, have a good day, brother. You too. 